Jacob Lawrence was an American painter born in Atlantic City, New Jersey on September 7, 1917. Although he was born in New Jersey, his family actually came from the rural South, places like South Carolina and Virginia, and his family made their way north to New Jersey, then Pennsylvania, and eventually Harlem, New York City. It was during this time that many African-American families, just like Jacob's, were actually moving away from the rural South because the South was becoming a really unsafe place for African-American families to live. In fact, so many families left the South that this period of time was known as the Great Migration. Many families left the South to move to the North because they felt that the North would offer them a much safer and better opportunity to start a fair life there. The Great Migration became a really big inspiration for Jacob Lawrence later in life when he started to create art as a young man. When Jacob was about seven years old, his parents got a divorce, and when he was about 10, he was placed in foster care with his siblings while his mother searched and searched for work in New York. When Jacob was about 13 years old, he and his siblings reunited with their mother in Harlem, New York City. Just like the Great Migration in Jacob's life would have a really big impact on his art, living in Harlem was also a huge inspiration for Jacob in creating his art. He depicted a lot of pictures showing African-American life in Harlem, New York City. We will see all of his inspirations in this story, Jake Makes a World, Jacob Lawrence, a Young Artist in Harlem, written by Sharifa Rhodes Pitts, illustrated by Christopher Myers. In the morning, Jake watches the sun wake up. He makes a big stretch and the sun stretches too. With the first light, the dancing dark shadows begin to fade. Then the colors come again. Yellow, orange, and blue on the quilt that covers Jake and his brother in bed. Mother's paper flowers in pink and red. His feet sink deep into the thick blue rug. When his toes touch the ground, it's like a sky upside down. When Jake moved to this new city, this New York to this neighborhood called Harlem to live with his mother again, these familiar things from his old home in Philadelphia greeted him like the long-lost friends. Outside Jake's building, men play chess and checkers, balancing the boards on their knees. Older boys sell fruit from a wagon or ice from a bucket, shouting for people to come down and get it. Mothers walk fast to work and more work. Signs promise home-cooked meals for 15 cents and a shoe shine to make you brand new. A preacher in a hat shouts and sings about God. A newsboy tells the stories of the day from downtown and around the world, but tells them with a tune. At the corner, a short man stands on a stepladder, telling everyone how we will get the freedom we need. Most days after school, Jake goes to a place called Utopia Children's House. The word utopia means that it is a special place, unlike any other. For Jake, it is. At Utopia House, Jake makes things with his hands. He carves a block of soap into a fish. He sews scraps of leather into a secret pouch. With watercolors, he swirls the shadows that dance on his wall at dawn and the patterns of the rugs in his living room. Jake takes a stick of charcoal and draws a pair of eyes to see everything the people on the street see. He draws one pair of ears to hear all the shouts and songs, one mouth to carry all their voices. All the faces Jake sees on the street become one face. Jake shows this new face to his teacher, who smiles and nods and says, you should see this, a very old mask from Africa. Jake stares at the mask for a long while, and then he makes his own mask from brown paper bags and glue and paint. When he is done, the mask smiles at him. Next, Jake takes a shoebox, and in the box he tries to fit the whole street. Inside are cardboard chessmen, tiny boys folded from construction paper, and mothers walking fast to work, wearing dresses cut from magazines. He stacks matchboxes to make buildings and paves the street with sandpaper. Jake has made a world, a small piece of this place called Harlem. It is now his home. 
Jake's Harlem has all the shouts and songs and noises of the Harlem outside, but here they are not sounds. They are colors. They are shadows dancing. They are rhythms. They are light.